I lived in England by the coast, and we lived closest to the European side of the country. And so it reminds me of how the beaches were all uh, mined and barbed wired. You couldn't go on the beach for all the years of the war. Um, and so again, that, that brings that, the, the brokenness of that and the horror of that um, and what should be a beautiful venue. Two sponsors of this exhibit are the Utah District of Rotor International and uh, the Salt Lake Interfaith Roundtable. It's been a joy for us to have them, and of course uh, we are privileged to have them because they're owned by the Interfaith Group at the Presidio in San Francisco. They're not ours. We've just had this great privilege, and these are exquisite pieces and very, very fragile. So um, it's just a remarkable opportunity, but we're very grateful to them for allowing us to have had it this time this time and to be able to display it and for their help in supporting how it should be displayed and setting it all up and yeah, it's been a, a great experience. The, the art exhibit originated really with uh, Frederick MacDonald who was a chaplain in the army uh, traveling around Europe at the end of World War II. Uh, when he was in Coventry, he went to the bombed out cathedral and was moved deeply by uh, the, de the senseless destruction of something of such great beauty and how long it took to build and how quickly it was gone. And he uh, picked up some shards of the stained glass windows because he wanted to remember the feelings that he had and the place. He ended up doing that at 24 other houses of worship throughout uh, several countries in Europe. Those shards, he mailed the shards home with thoughts that he had about the place. Uh, he always had wanted to do something meaningful with them that would remember and, and make people aware of, of the horrors of war and the longing for peace. And uh, when he was past 90, he was leaving, living in a senior facility and at dinner one night, the conversation turned to stained glass and he said, I've got some under my bed and uh, his dinner companions were intrigued and said, and where did you get these shards? And when he started telling them the stories of these places all across wor wor uh, Europe, uh, they were deeply moved. And there was one woman that was particularly insistent that we need to make something happen with these. Her husband uh, was, a st he did stained glass as a hobby. And she arranged for him to be put in touch with a French woman, uh, a stained glass artist in Oakland, Armel LaRue. Uh, Armel ended up meeting with uh, Chaplain McDonald, and originally they were thinking about making one big window and incorporating all 300 shards of glass and having something memorable about it. But the more Armel talked to him, his, his memories of each of these places and of the people and the human stories was so poignant that <clears throat> she decided we just need to do a piece for each one of these houses of worship. And she started on that endeavor and engaged the help of 12 other stained glass artists. So 13 uh, glass artists are the origin of this exhibit. It's called Remembered Light obviously because it was remembrances from the Second World War. And I find that particularly interesting for myself because I was born in England, I was born during the war, and remember very clearly the uh, years after the war, going to school with a gas mask and similar activities. So this was very close to me, and there's particularly one picture in here, or one display in here, that is about Coventry Cathedral, which of course is embedded in the British memory as being a horrific time when that cathedral was destroyed. Very early in the Second World War, it was destroyed by the Germans. And of course, nothing could be more horrific to British people than seeing one of their buildings, which was probably 500, 600 years old, destroyed. And because of that, um, the Allies, which of course were Britain and America, they did go over to Germany and do a bombing raid on the city of Dresden, which many people recall from their history. And the whole city of Dresden was destroyed by firebombs. This was the first time they had used incendiary devices. And that was strictly in retaliation 
for the destruction of the cathedral in England. And so I always point out the futility of war when I talk about that, that it was sort of tit for tat, because I, as far as I know, there were no munitions factories in Dresden. It was a very famous historical city in Germany. And so it was probably one of the most destructive things that could have been done. Uh, a big part of the motivation was concern about the division and polarization that's been uh, growing in our country and trying to get people to stop and think about it and to see if there are things we can do to help redirect that to something that's more healthy. Uh, one way is just bringing them into this space because you get all kinds of, of different people here together experiencing the same kind of thing as they take time to look at the pieces and to read the messages and, and there's such uh, deeply human stories here that I think, I think when people are together and are touched by something together, I think that brings some, some kind of unity. We have seen people leave here in tears. They have read everything, they've looked at it all, and it, it, it just is internalized with them that they have to do something. We all have to do something. It's not just one person, we all have to do something. And it's, it's an overpowering uh, realization, and I think this exhibit has, has provided that for people. And we'll never know, you know, they leave, they may sign their name in the book, they may re write something very beautiful in there, and you don't know, but you hope that after six weeks of this exhibit, that we have changed uh, by allowing people to come and view all of these, um, it changed people.